occur and in some cases be tolerated in 2006. But the reality is, throughout Europe, soccer players of color are often subjected to racist acts and language as they play what is known as the beautiful game overseas. The World Cup, the globe's single largest event, begins Friday on ESPN and ABC. And the joy of cultural celebration is tempered by concerns over controlling racist outbursts. Jeremy Schapp on the beautiful game turned ugly. Carlos Kameni is from Cameroon in West Africa. He plays goal for the Spanish club team Espanyol, one of the strongest teams in perhaps the strongest league in the world. But even fans in his own stadium shower him with racist slurs and bananas. When I see a banana on the field, I think, I'm not a monkey, I'm a human. It's hard for those far away to understand. But on one hand, I'm a respected member of the team. And on the other hand, I'm an animal. Mark Zorro was 18 years old when he left his native Ivory Coast, the nation he'll represent at this World Cup, to play soccer in Italy. For three years, he's played for the Sicilian team Messina. And in nearly every game, fans have taunted him. Finally, last fall, during a game against Inter Milan, Zorro had had enough. He picked up the ball and threatened to walk off the field. Two players from the opposing team rushed to Zorro's side, imploring him to stay on the field and the fans to stop. I couldn't take it anymore. What I did was instinctive. They were in my head. My head was so full of what they were saying, I couldn't concentrate on the game. And I couldn't go on like that. And I had to pick up the ball. When Zorro next played Inter Milan, some fans held up a banner that read, Peanuts and bananas are the pay for your infamy. Three months after the Zorro incident, Samuel Eto, a striker for Barcelona and one of the world's best players, found himself in a similar situation. Eto, like Kameni from Cameroon, was playing on the road at Zaragoza, home to some of Spain's most openly racist fans. Angry and frustrated by the monkey chants that resounded every time he touched the ball, Eto repeatedly cried, no mas, no more. It is not a right answer to lose it, but I think sometimes people should understand why. French striker Thierry Henry is one of the most acclaimed players on the planet. But like Samuel Eto, being an elite player hasn't spared him from racist slurs. I can tell you, you know, so many times, you know, um, monkey chants and, uh, and uh, people spitting at me when I was taking a throw-in or a corner kick. Uh, whatever you can imagine. Americans might find it difficult to understand how and why there are so many overt displays of racism in European soccer. But there's never been anything akin to the U.S. civil rights movement in Europe in part because there are so few black Europeans. What is taboo in the U.S. simply isn't in Europe. The continent, in fact, is home to dozens of far-right political parties, many of which have become popular by breeding fear of black and Muslim immigrants. European soccer has also long been a bastion of hooliganism. In the stadiums, all of this makes for a combustible mix. The biggest thing that we faced, and we're facing it now in continental Europe, is denial. People saying, uh, it's only a few individuals, don't worry about them. Uh, what problem? I don't see a problem. It, it's, it's not to do with, with, with race, it's to do with the culture, it's to do with a footballing form of abuse. It's not just some fans who are guilty of racism. 18 months ago, Luis Aragones, the coach of the Spanish national team, was preparing his team for a World Cup qualifier against France when he was overheard exhorting one of his players by insulting France's Thierry Henry. To be honest, the first time I heard it, I thought it was a joke. One of my teammates came up in my room and said, did you see what uh, Luis Aragones said about you? And I said, no, I just, you know, and then 
told me what he said, and I went, ah, come on. He said, no, no, it's on TV, they have it on TV. I said, ah, how can they have that on TV? And I put the TV on, and there it was. Uh, I, I was speechless. The Spanish Federation fined Aragon is $5,000. He will be coaching Spain this month at the World Cup. Aragon is continues to insist that he has done nothing wrong. I cannot understand it. When I have gypsy friends, black, yellow friends, this is not me. It has nothing to do with me. What happens is that it is done to bother the football player. It's also done with fatness. They call them fat. It's the same. It's very different to say someone's got a big nose or big ears or is going bored or is fat. And we've never had in, in, in this country or other nations people being killed or maimed in the street because they're fat. There have been times when extremism in the stands has spilled onto the field. For example, Paolo Di Canio, a striker on the Roman team Lazio, has several times returned the fascist salute to the fascist fans who worship him. Europe's national soccer federations have the power to regulate behavior in the stands and on the field, but most have taken no action. When people were complaining about it sometimes, you know, the authorities and even the referees on the pitch were just saying to you or whoever was getting abused, uh, get on with it. You know, okay, I have to get on with it. But you would like also after that uh, the, the authorities do something about it. A year ago, Henri did something himself. In conjunction with Nike, he launched a star-studded TV and print campaign in Europe urging fans to help fight racism. Stand up. Speak up. So many people, you know, close their eyes on what is happening right now and don't want to talk about it because it became a normality. I just wanted to make people aware that, uh, you know, that's not something that should happen in, uh, in a game, a game that we love. And um, also to make people aware sometimes that if you understand and you hear someone doing that, to make them realize that that is not something to do, you know, to talk about it. Even if it's one person in the stadium, it's one, it's one too many. Seeing someone who is possibly the world's best player uh, to say, no, this is wrong, I don't accept this, um, is very, very significant. But it's a balance, you know, it's not their responsibility in 2006 to be taking on these types of battles. There, that's, there, there are people paid lots of money to run the game, to, to, to make sure that that's done in the most efficient way and ensure the, the welfare of everybody. FIFA, soccer's world governing body, has always left the problem to each country's federation. But in March, with the World Cup and all the attendant media coverage three months away, FIFA President Sepp Blatter decided to act. He announced new and harsh regulations that will penalize teams whose players, coaches, officials or fans engage in racist conduct. Penalties would affect league standings and World Cup eligibility. Financially, the consequences could be huge. There have been a lot of incidents certainly the last few months, but this has been going on for years. Why hasn't the problem been addressed before? Because uh, the national associations or the leagues, they haven't done their homework. But now they will be obliged to do so, and FIFA will have uh, not only uh, let, let's say to the, the right to monitor it, but the right to intervene if the right actions are not taken. And we will do it. We will do it. During the World Cup, the new regulations will apply to players, coaches and officials, but not to fans. There are concerns that some fans might taunt their own players in an effort to have their opponents penalized. The stakes will be high. With the world watching, any racist incident would indelibly stain the beautiful game. What will happen to fans, say, in Germany during the World Cup who taunt black players? Yeah, where? Outside of the stadium? stadium? No, if they do it in the stadium, then I abandon. I abandon, then we close stadium, we go home. Definitely. No, seriously. No, seriously. Listen, if in this World Cup, with all the educational work we are doing now, and we still have that, then something is wrong in our society. And I don't know where we have to go. You heard Sepp Blatter of FIFA threaten to abandon World Cup matches where racist behavior is exhibited. Again, the ultimate penalty, the loss of three points in the standings, 
will apply only to players and team officials, not to fans, where most of the reported incidents have occurred. That loss of three points, which is the equivalent of a win, would likely doom any country from advancing out of group play.